y'all. It's Miss Katie and welcome to Heritage Ways. This is the channel where our family loves to share home, heritage, and hope. And I really like to share good recipes with y'all. I like to share frugal recipes and things that have good ingredients. So today I'm going to ask you, do you like dip. Do you like French onion dip? It's a classic recipe from the 70s. I grew up in the 70s as a child and we always had French onion dip in the 70s and 80s, any party that was that we went to. So today let's make a bulk mix of French onion dip and we're going to use my cookbook to do it. The recipe in my cookbook, French onion soup mix, in the cookbook from Katie's Kitchen. Let's get started. Well, happy summer, y'all. It's summertime, and I know you're going to be eating probably chips and dip. You're going to be taking things to a picnic. Let's pull together this bulk mix that you can have. It's very easy to just add this mix to um, sour cream to make a dip, or you can use it as a base to make French onion soup if you wanted to. Uh, it just replaces those packets that you buy. And it's got all kinds of things in those packets that we don't even know how to pronounce. Let's get started putting this together. And again, we're using the cookbook, or the recipe, that's on page 136 of my cookbook from Katie's Kitchen, Volume 1. This recipe makes a little bit less than two cups of mix, and it would be equivalent to eight of the store-bought um, envelopes. It is best if you can get your spices in bulk. I like to buy mine from Amish or Mennonite bulk food stores, so it's best if you can do that. It's cheaper, more economical if you can do that. In one, in, in my mixing bowl here, I've already measured out one and a half cups of dried onions. I've got a fourth a cup of dried parsley, and if you have a garden and you dry your own, that's even better. Then I've got a fourth a cup of onion powder. So because this bowl's not big enough, I'm just going to dump it all into this eight cup measuring bowl here. Alright, now let's talk for a minute about the tea powder. It does have instant tea powder. Yes, the kind of instant tea that you would drink. And you can see in this video where I did a review of a couple of instant tea powders. I'm not sponsored in that video or this one. So I am um, just helping you to um, navigate through some of the tea powders that you find, the organic tea powders. Now, typically in the past, I would use the instant tea that's found at the grocery store. And I think it's a little more, um, it's, it's bigger chunks, it's, it's not as fine it's not as powdery as what I'm using today. Uh, this dissolves very well, and actually I'm going to use half today. My recipe calls for a fourth cup of instant tea powder, um, or instant tea, and since this is a little finer and more powdery, I'm using half. So a half of a fourth a cup is two tablespoons. I'm, I can add more if I need to, but this was just so... Um, powdery and I thought it would do well. Now you, you might say that's strange but um, that's, this gives the French onion dip its distinct flavor and color as well although it is 100% organic tea. Now this recipe is my own. I invented this myself, tweaked several that I've seen in the past. I'm using for a little bit of a cheesy flavor or a rich or a deeper flavor and to add some nutrients, we've got three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. This is not baking yeast. Um, this is not, if you're, if you're not familiar with this, this is not the yeast that you would bake with. It is labeled nutritional yeast and it is best to purchase this in bulk if you are on a budget and trying to um, be economical and frugal. Also, I find that those type of um, spices and herbs and seasonings that I buy in bulk are actually better quality in my opinion. 
they haven't been sitting on the shelves as long, at least where I purchased them. All right, mixing all that up. The next three ingredients, we have two teaspoons of each one. So two teaspoons of healthy salt. I use either Redmond's Real Salt or some good Himalayan pink salt. Ground black pepper, two teaspoons. And celery seed. I love to put my jars, my bulk spices in these jars and label them. Makes your home kind of more cozy and homey in my opinion and it's all uniform. We even have these on our tiny home kitchen pantry here in our RV. The other ingredient we're going to add, the other and the last one to our mix is one teaspoon of sugar or sugar substitute of your choosing equivalent to a teaspoon and I am using this um, pure cane sugar. Non-GMO pure cane sugar. So that's what I add to that one teaspoon. Now we're going to stir all that up and I'm going to tell you how to use it because this isn't actually the end of our mix. See, you've got, got it all nice and you've got your chunks of onion, your seasonings, and your brown powder that you're used to seeing on in the packets. And I'll just store it in this cute little jar here and I'll label it. But that's not it. When you get ready to use it, you're going to need a beef bouillon. Now, a um, long time ago, I would use a bouillon, a granule uh, that I would buy, and I would add it to this mix. But then I just I started reading uh, ingredients, and the MSG really bothered me in that. So what I do now is I purchase a beef bouillon. It's usually refrigerated. It's no MSG and I will add the beef bouillon to the recipe when I'm making dip or soup or whatever. The cookbook instructs you of that. It says stir all except the bouillon into a bowl or jar, which is what we're doing. Do not use a blender because you're not necessarily wanting to make all this into a powder. Store in an airtight container such as I use jars. And then to use, of course, you're going to need to shake or stir the jar of mix. And what I do is I just, you know, you can shake it or stir it, but I get it, I dig down and get it out and kind of level it off that way. Because if you're going to just get it from the top, you're going to not get all the finer powder that fell down at the bottom. So I just stir it, kind of shake my hand, and then there's your spoon of it. So you would, you would do that and combine a scant fourth a cup. If you're new to cooking, a scant is slight. So it means you would not fill the fourth of a cup measure up all the way. Just a little under. A little under. And then you would combine that with a teaspoon of beef bouillon. If you choose to use the the cheaper bouillon that does have the MSG, that's your choice, but um, a teaspoon of beef bouillon to your scant fourth a cup, and that equals um, your envelope that you would buy at the store. That's why you're making this the scant, because the beef bouillon, beef bouillon would equal the one fourth cup. Now, to use this, you would combine this mixture into 16 ounces of sour cream, and it would make your French onion dip mix and you do need to let that soften so that the onions can kind of rehydrate and the flavors will marry. So that is that recipe. You could also use it like I said uh, to make soup just if you're using one of those packets to make soup you can use this. Uh, you know it, it doesn't, doesn't cost much at all um, if you're getting your spices in bulk and um, you know, it stores, you can just store it tightly and label it. If you want to put the date on it, you can, but it's not really going to go bad for a long, long time. And it's just a wonderful thing to have so that you don't have to buy it. Now, keep in mind, friends, that you may need to add the, the fourth cup of tea powder, like it suggests in my 
recipe like it tells you to in my recipe. I only added uh, half of that just because this is the first time I've used the powder that was really fine and I was trying to not use more than I needed to just to save money. But um, you might need to add uh, the full amount or whatever you think between two tablespoons and a fourth cup. So just keep that in mind. And if you'd like to purchase the cookbook, there's a link down below. The cookbook that I've written is um, is 157 pages in it. And it has over 200 recipes. It's got tips. It's got stories that I feel like um, somebody who knows me or doesn't know me could relate about home, heritage, and hope. It's got... Um, um, information for a new cook as well as a seasoned cook. It's for people who like to just read cookbooks or use them for the recipes. So if you'd like to purchase one, we self-publish. Mr. Patient will get that out to you and you can just use the link below in the description box. I'd love to know in the comments below, do you like to make your own dip mixes? I would like to know if there is a mix that you would like to see me present to you on a video. So let me know if you have any suggestions or recommendations or things that you would like to see me pull together for you and share with you on a video. I hope y'all have a great summer and I thank my dear sweet friend, Miss Barbara, for these beautiful sunflowers that she blessed us with today. Please don't forget we would love for you to like and share the video and subscribe if you haven't because we love to share videos and content about home, heritage, and hope. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you next time. And please don't forget to um, and please don't forget to share and subscribe, like the video, and, and please don't forget to thumbs up, like the video, if you enjoy a good, okay. <clears throat> please don't forget, it will help us. Please don't forget, we would love.